Um, so I just wanted to quickly talk to you a little bit about MS Research Australia and um, the clinical trials network that we have um, set up so a few years ago. So MS Research Australia is the, the research arm of MS Australia and we've been around now for um, seven years and um, what we aim to do is to fund and coordinate MS research throughout Australia. Um, so we co work with the, the scientists um, in research institutes and universities all over Australia and we also um, we sort of really try and keep ourselves connected to all of those and keep them connected to each other. So we try and get the scientists working together, um, all pushing in the same direction or directions to, to get the best results um, for progress into uh, finding better treatments and ways to prevent MS. So our strategy is to invest in research itself, fund the projects that need funding, to try and increase the capacity for MS research in, us, in Australia, which is um, really to fund the young researchers, the up-and-coming um, doctors and uh, scientists that will be the researchers of the future. Um, so we're trying to increase the numbers and the, um, and the um, quality of uh, science in the MS research. Um, and really, as I mentioned, try to get people working together. And we um, host workshops and we have um, coordinated the ANS Gene Consortium from um, the David Booth spoke about. Um, and we also try and get, um, uh, we fund a, re a research uh, conference which happens um, every other year. And um, we stimulate um, new ideas really uh, for researchers to work together. The collaborative research platforms um, Anne's gene being one of those, um, are a, a sort of big area that we work on and uh, Theresa's going to talk about the, the brain bank. But the one I really wanted to sort of talk about today was the clinical trials network. Um, but I'll, I'll just to sort of quickly touch on, and this uh, slide really represents everything that you've heard today in terms of what the, the doctors and scientists that you've heard from today have been talking about. Really our goals are to prevent MS from happening in the, in the first place. That's obviously the best case scenario for the future. Um, we're trying to find new ways to diagnose and treat MS. You've heard about how important it is to um, treat MS early. Um, so better ways to diagnose MS and, and track the progress of MS is really important. Um, and really finding those ways. At the moment, the drug therapies, as um, Dr. Dr. Hodg Hodgkinson talked about, are targeted at the immune response. We really need to be able to ta tackle the degeneration of the neurons and the, and the myelin that is, is already occurring. So the Clinical Trials Network was set up uh, a few years ago now to really encourage uh, research in, in Australia, clinical research in Australia, get more doctors and more patients involved in clinical trials um, and give everybody the opportunity to get access to new um, areas of treatment. So we have um, an, a, an executive committee of really experienced um, MS clinical trial neurologists who um, provide the reviewing and, and the information um, for the whole network. Um, and we have a variety of ways, really it's about communication um, in the most part, bringing doctors and clinicians together, but also um, feeding information through to people with MS um, and feeding information through to the doctors as well, so that everybody is aware of the, the trials that are ongoing, um, of new information, of the results of trials and so on. So we're really trying to provide as much information as possible. So getting involved in clinical trials, what's, what's in it for you as a person with MS? It's one way that you can get access to new forms of treatment that you might not um, otherwise fi uh, have access to, especially if um, you've tried all the other, other available treatments and you're um, not responding or you're finding uh, the side effects are too um, troublesome for you. It's uh, taking part in a clinical trial can actually give you an opportunity to explore new options. Um, and it's also something that you can do to help contribute to progress in MS research and help progress towards new treatments and uh, ultimately a cure. So it's um, a great way to get involved and take part. So clinical trials can take many and various forms. Um, the ones that most usually spring to mind is the, the drug trials. But um, there are clinical trials for any medical intervention that you can think of, be that surgery, physiotherapy, um, and information um, tools as well. They're usually run by health professionals, researchers, or the uh, pharmaceutical industry. Um, and, but 
in, in the main, they're always approved by a, an ethical committee that will look at the evidence for the trial, what's come before it, what's the scientific evidence for, for this new uh, intervention, look at the risks, look at the benefits, um, and make a, a collective decision uh, as to whether it's an ethical, ethically designed and ethically um, based trial. So it's really important to ensure that if you are taking part in a clinical trial that all of these things are in place. Trials are designed um, to get the best information, and uh, both Susan Hodgkinson and Jeanette Lechman Scott talked about the, the importance of the, the, the way that clinical trials are designed. Choosing the patients, or not choosing the patients, but randomly assigning patients to different treatment groups, making sure that the, the patients and the doctors do not know whether the patient is on the the um, treatment, the, the drug or the placebo, is really, really important so that you can objectively um, study the side effects of the treatment and whether the treatment is, is effective. Placebo effect is, is really a reality. It's a it can be a huge effect, particularly in more um, inv invasive types of uh, trials such as surgery, where the, um, the knowledge that you're having a medical intervention can have a physical impact in your body and actually make something happen in your body. It's a, it's a real effect and not purely a sort of psychological effect. It has a physiological basis. So it's really, really important that um, the drug or the intervention, whatever it might be, is compared against a placebo, which is a, a fake or a dummy treatment. And recruiting enough numbers, and um, Susan and, and Jeanette both referred to this, that you need to be able to show that the statistical significance of a trial. And these, these sort of design features are all the sort of gold standard features for international um, standards of how clinical trials are conducted. So it's important to be able to understand and, um, and have knowledge if you're thinking about a clinical trial about how the, the study is designed. Many of them can be frustrating, um, not knowing whether you might be taking a placebo. You obviously, everybody wants to be the one that's on the drug, but it's really, really important to find out for the future, for everybody, that the drug is effective and that you're not taking a costly or even potentially dangerous treatment. So placebos are very important. Oh, something weird has happened to my um, slide design there. Sorry about that. Um, so this is preclinical, pre phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. And these are all the different steps of a, a clinical trial that you might be asked to get involved in, apart from the preclinical. That's usually done on the poor, dumb animals um, who, <laughs> who can't um, comment. Um, so that's already to all the work that's done before the drug gets anywhere near a patient to make sure that the, the concept, the, the idea, the biology is sound. Um, and to study the metabolism of the drug in a biological system. Then you'll have small safety studies, um, trying to find the right dosage, which will then gradually escalate up to, to taking more patients um, and to get the, the full placebo versus um, drug or intervention um, against each other. And then you have the phase four, which um, co continues after the drug has become uh, more widely available. And you may be asked to... to or in, be interested in taking part in any of those particular phases. Now, drug trials, I'm sort of, the phase, phases of uh, trials there refer mostly to drug trials. But if you're not interested in getting involved in, in testing new drugs, you can still contribute to um, progress in treatment and, um, and living with MS by taking part in other types of trials. And these are usually um, run by researchers, academics, and um, nurses who, and doctors who deal with patients with MS to make sure that they have the best knowledge to give you the right services, to give you the right treatments, um, to be, uh, enable you to manage your symptoms in the most effective way based on evidence, based on um, real knowledge about whether these things work or not. So um, the uh, doctors you see here, Dr. Sophie Hill is at, doing a study at the moment in Melbourne on um, the best way to provide people with MS with information about MS, about new treatments, about drugs and so on. And she's actually um, consulting with patients. She's got focus groups. She's got um, an online survey. She has um, focus groups with nurses and other service providers. 
um, to find the best way of providing information, not just information um, and the evidence and the data that's out there, but actually how best the patients can use that information in their own circumstances. So how best to process and, and synthesize that information to make dis real um, helpful decisions um, for you and for, to, for discussion with your doctors. Um, there are trials that um, MSRA have funded in the past into contractures and different physiotherapy techniques, strength training and so on. Um, and we have the longitudinal study which is a database of um, people with MS that surveyed at regular points throughout um, over the years. Many people have taken part in this and, um, and fantastically come back and repeat the surveys year after year so that we get information on the economic impact on employment that has already been mentioned today um, and on um, the prescription medications that people are taking. All of this stuff helps to provide the, the advocacy that's required to make sure that the services are there for people with MS. So in terms of clinical trials, if you, I've really skimmed through and glanced over some of the aspects of clinical trials there, but there's some really good reading materials that are out there. Um, the MS International Federation has some really useful resources on um, clinical trials, as does the Centre for Information and Study on Clinical Research Participation, which is rather a long name for a centre. Um, but they have some really useful resources that will help you understand uh, the clinical trials process and provide you with some tools that you can uh, use as uh, questions that you can ask of your doctors and so on. Um, we have, a, a, as I've talked about, we provide information and try and um, get as much information out there as possible. We have a website which um, is possibly needs updating at the moment, um, but we try to provide as updated to date information as we can about the trials that are out there. Um, and, um, and other aspects of clinical trials. We're really happy for you to give us any feedback that you might have on um, the information that we're able to provide, um, but feel free to go and have a browse and, and have a look at that information. Thank you very much.